Today, I'm going to be talking about A Month in CMAT by Hisham Matar. Uh, Matar won a Pulitzer Prize for his 2016 memoir, The Return, and has published a well-received novel titled In the Country of Men. But this book is not a memoir, and it's not a novel. It's more of a travel journal merged with art critique, where he goes to, you might have guessed it, Siena for a month. Mostly for the purpose of looking at artworks he's previously enjoyed from afar and digitally, um, Siena's artists that he enjoys, but he definitely gets some relaxing in there too, uh, vacationing in Italy. A critique by the New York Times quotes Matar on his feelings of a Caravaggio, then states, passages like this are the heart of this book. A month in Siena resists the narrative markers we might expect. There's a lovely section about Matar's meeting with a Jordanian man who invites him into his Sienese home, and another about going reluctantly to a 90th birthday party for a dear old friend in a villa not far away. But these are passed over as peripheral to the main action, which is paintings as experience. Uh, end quote, by the way. This isn't really what I felt. In fact, I feel this quote in the New York Times Review is the antithesis of what I felt. Uh, to kind of set up the foundation for wh how I want to portray this, here's a popular streamer named German 985 teaching his viewers the photography concept of the rule of thirds. Great. Rule of thirds means paint a grid in this square, right? It's two lines down, two lines horizontal. And what you're doing is you're, you're essentially matching the where the cross points are. So for instance, you don't, I, you know, oh, th that looks like shit. You know what I mean? But this, that looks fucking great. That looks cool. I love rule of thirds. Straight on camera pictures. What are you, a fucking amateur? I wouldn't want to do this, right? I want to get you in the bottom left third and you in the top left third. Thank you very much. That is a great photo. This photo looks like absolute dog shit. Right. What's going on with this bench? Can anybody tell me what's going on with the bench? Can somebody tell me why I'm filming it like this? Somebody tell me why I'm doing it like that. Because the bench is the subject. The bench, the corners are lining up with the third. Like this. Similar to that explanation, it seems like the art, in this case referring to the dog on the bench, is the subject. It is, on the face of things, more interesting and more popular. But what appears to be in the background is what actually makes the piece as a whole a success. The bench's alignment is what makes the photo composition pleasing. And similarly, the little back piece stories of everyday life in Siena is what makes this book nice. These interactions of the Jordanian man and child and the birthday party share the sun of the city uh, and warm your heart with that sunshine. My preference of the CNE scenes over the art criticism is reinforced by the fact that the criticism is kind of crap. Matar looks at the allegory of good government by Lorenzetti, for example, and says a character in the painting named Concord, quote, twists the two threads into a rope and passes it to a council of citizens, 24 men. Among these men, no two faces are the same. They are indeed so distinct that they seem to be people Lorenzetti knew, end quote. These are the faces he is talking about. Maybe I'm just artistically ignorant, but they look pretty much the same to me. I would say 90% of the art focus portions are objectivist descriptions of a painting, while that painting is printed on the neighboring page. That kind of juxtaposition means that you are constantly referring, analyzing his own critique of the painting and coming up with your own decision of whether that critique is correct or incorrect. The remaining, a remaining, 5% is an analysis of the characters in the painting, whether they feel good, bad, and for what reason. 5% is a reflection of himself because of what he sees in those people. I enjoy the background on objects of criticism because I think it helps solidify opinions which are otherwise spineless, and that background is lacking in his art criticisms here. It may be personal preference, but that's the kind of opinion-making and criticism that I hope to emulate 
in the style of my own critique and in my reviews. Nevertheless, the book made me feel pretty good, kind of, you know, longing for a sunny European vacation. Uh, although the art may be a focal point for Matar and other critics, as a reader, the interludes between the paintings are what drew me in, uh, brought a smile to my face, and really made me happy. I'm going to rate this book a 7.8 out of 10. Thanks for watching. If you liked, please click the like button. Consider subscribing. Leave a comment if you read this book and what you thought about it or your thoughts on any other book. Uh, I appreciate your time. Thanks.